as a young citizen of India, armed with technology, knowledge and love for my nation, with a vision of transforming India into a developed nation, I am joining Shobhith University. What about you? Very good morning to all the participants from India and abroad. Soviet Institute of Engineering and Technology meet at DMB University and its Centers of Excellence, Center for Agricultural Informatics and E-Governance Research Studies, and Center for Agribusiness and Disaster Management Studies, we extend greetings to all the participants from India and abroad who are attending today's national webinar series on doubling farmers' income by 2022. Atma Nirvar in Agriculture. This webinar series is being hosted on every Thursday at 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Indian Standard Time. Today is 11th November 2021. This webinar is on the topic, very important topic, commercial processing of farmers. The next game changer in dairy. On behalf of the Honorable Chancellor, Honorable Vice Chancellor, the faculty members of the university, and on my behalf, and as Professor of Professor Emeritus of the Chairman of the Centers of Excellence, Center for Agriculture, Informatics, and E-Governance Research Studies, Center for Agribusiness and Disaster Management Studies, Center for Informatics Development Solutions and Applications. Center for Industry 4.0 Technology Studies and Applications and Center for Informatics and Computing. Let me become the guest speaker to deliver a talk in the 52nd edition of this national webinar series, Dr. Harinder Singh, Fodder Research Specialist, Excellent Enterprises Private Limited, Kanna, Punjab State, India. For the benefits of the participants and the guest speaker, so far under this webinar series, the university has organized 51 webinars on the topics. Role of agricultural cooperative societies and e-governance. Blockchain-based fishery value chain. A self-contained village felt in the day. Spices informatics value chain. Land and a camera, a camouflaged treasure trove. Smart hill agriculture, a digitalized hill agriculture value system. Mara mobile, Mara marketing. Integrated mariculture, aquaponics, and precision agriculture, MAPA bioforms for revolution. Smart tribal agriculture, optimizing value chain. Digital agri tech and industry perspective. Land resources information system in India person and road ahead, weather decision technologies for increasing farm income, big data in smart farming, sustainable soil and land management for climate smart agriculture, understanding market dynamics for increasing farm income, role of technologies in mitigating crop risk, how to generate additional profit via simple, attractive approaches in farm produce, adoption of flexi rubber check dam technology, Potential benefit for farmers in rainfed and coastal agro ecosystems. Realizing the economic benefits of agroforestry. After all, organic farming solutions for increasing crop yields and quality while increasing farm income and improving health, soil health. By Dr. Daman Walia from USA. Closing the nutrient loops, phosphorus management in protein farming improving nutrient use efficiency and farm productivity. Artificial intelligence enabled pest management technology for agricultural crop protection without pesticides. Empowering farmers through extension and knowledge dissemination, role of mass media. Smart poultry monitoring solutions. Agrobiodiversity, intellectual property laws, agriculture and farmers welfare and insight into the issues for Indian agrarian economy. Manufacture and application of biochar for increased soil fertility and crop productivity. Sustainable integration of livestock with agriculture for farm income. Lessons from Asia Pacific region. 
daily informatics network value chain a daily tech startup perspective for father's income uh, for farmers income increase daily informatics network value chain a daily tech startup perspective for farmers income increase spices informatics network value chain a turmeric startup perspective for farmers income increase generating sustainable on farm income through fintech interventions nutrition sensitive agriculture pathway for increasing farmer income artificial intelligence and data analytics to ensure optimal nutrition in the soil harvested food that minimizes human disease bioenergy supply chain a business opportunity for rural enterprise and the farmer producer organizations tech enabling india's tech star of the farmers for manifold increase in productivity and income open insurance ecosystem for agricultural producers risk management solutions to overcome repercussions on farmers income market stability and food safety role of mass media for farmers income increase a case study from green tv extract open source digital infrastructure for the agriculture ecosystem a linux foundation project by mr sumit zogal founder and executive director at stack a project of linux foundation linux foundation non profit and the ceo agra logics usa circular bioeconomy towards resilience urgent need for redefining raw materials and modified waste management policies and regulations agri tech new horizon in indian agriculture supporting of farmers for marketing will only help doubling of income by 2022 rural transformation for farmers income increase case studies from impoverished districts mobile enabled software as a service to solve complex supply chain challenges a case study from daily orders john dirais journey in india integrated precision agriculture solutions doubling the income of farmers through agro eco agri revolution bears carbon farming initiative post production intervention maximizing value for farmers beef models of revival of traditional water management systems to enable doubling of farmers income should we adopt farmers welfare as a new paradigm shift, paradigm instead of farmers income ict intervention in agriculture challenges and opportunities democratizing the future of farming a global experience today is the 52nd edition of the national webinar series which will be addressed by dr harinder singh the country's farmer researcher specialist excellent enterprises private limited kana punjab state india on the very important topic commercial processing of farmers next game changer in dairy dear participants please note the key words commercial processing farmers game changer and dairying sector agriculture sector is the foundation of indian economy acharya vinoba bhave said india is largely an agricultural country krishi pradhan desh and a country of villages gram pradhan desh and it has got more than 6.25 lakhs villages it employs more than 50% of the india's workforce and contributes 17 to 18% of its gdp at present agricultural livelihoods are being severely impacted worldwide as a result of anthropogenic global warming and climate change india is india's labor intensive and subsistence based agriculture sector is particularly vulnerable to this this you know development climate change has both the direct and indirect effects on agriculture productivity including changing rainfall patterns severe drought flooding and changes in the geographical redistribution of pests and diseases indian farming community comprises of about 14.5 crores operational holders of which 86% farmers uh, are, uh, are small and marginal size operational holdings farmer needs timely location specific and personalized information for effective control on their production risk and then market their produce to identify the market opportunities future is an area of increasing uncertainty 
though the future cannot be predicted it can be explored exploring the features help making better decision in the present time it opens new paths unveils new options unveils new options and enlarge our understanding of potential unexpected effects of our decisions at a time when climate smart agriculture is taking momentum in the international community the urgency of more future smart farmer organizations and the local communities become imperious the voice and the views of future smart farmer organization and local communities are needed to influence uh, the, to influence the national and international agenda i would like to quote the statement from the honorable prime minister's independence day address on 15th august 2021 he said i quote in the coming years we will have to increase the collective power of the small farmers of the country we have to give them new facilities they must become the country's pride chota kisan bade desh ki shan i would also would like to quote the recommendations from the reports of, of the national committee on doubling farmers income by 2022 report to 2018 volume 11 3 volume 4 and volume 11 and volume 12b of the doubling farmers income by 2022 report of 2018 of government of india has suggested reforms measure for income rise through digitalization of farm sector i have been associated with the volume 11 and volume 12b of this doubling farmers income by 2022 committee report committee to draft recommendations and 112b is on digital technology in agriculture 11 is on empowering the farmers through extension knowledge dissemination volume 12b has suggested seven mission mode project programs for introducing digitalization of agriculture in india smart tribal farming smart rainfed farming smart irrigated farming digitalized agromet advisories and agricultural risk management solutions digitalized agricultural resources information system and micro level planning for achieving smart village and smart farming digitalized value chain for about 400 agriculture commodities digitalized access to inputs technology knowledge skill agri fin agriculture finance credit marketing and agri business management to the farmers digitalized integrated land and water management system per drop more crop and digitalized farm health management for reduction of farmers loss farmer health plant health animal health soil health water health and fish health and environmental health it is very much essential the data which are coming out of this integrated farm uh, farm health management is the trillion dollar economy 75% of the disease which we get come from animal covid 19 situation has proved it so this is the need of the hour to establish digitalized integrated farm health management in the country to bring in all round development for the farming community in india atmanivar bharat the road ahead this is the vision of the honorable prime minister of india shri narendra modi of making india self reliant nation be rested on five i's intent inclusion investment infrastructure and innovation based on five pillars quantum jump and uh, in economy infrastructure one that represents modern india systems 21st century technology driven vibrant demography and demand for whereby the strength and strength of our demand and supply chain should be utilized to full capacity atmanirbhar bharat in agriculture it is the third third trench of atmanirbhar bharat abhiyan which has you know given 1.5 lakh crore as a booster for the agriculture sector and one about 13000 crores to achieve 100% vaccination of cattle buffaloes sheep goats and pigs and 15000 crores for animal husbandry infrastructure democratizing of features of feature of farming achieving sustainable development goal 2 zero hunger in a situation of rapid global population growth 
requires a continued focus on food production. Farming not merely needs to sustainably produce nutritious diet, but should also provide livelihood for farmers while retaining natural ecosystems and services. ICT enabled farm, farm centric agriculture services are essential. And we need to establish agri startups in farm management services, e commerce services, and government schemes, operations, and, and uh, <clears throat> management, which are spread across the entire agriculture value system, input supply chain, and output value chain. Let us look at National Livestock Mission. The focus of the scheme is on entrepreneurship development and breed improvement in poultry, sheep, goat, piggery, including feed and fodder development. Feed and fodder development, today's topic. The scheme is implemented with the following three submissions. Submission on breed development and livestock poultry. Submission on feed and fodder development. Submission on extension and innovation and submission on breed development of livestock and poultry. I repeat it. The scheme is being implemented as a sub scheme of white revolution, Rastriya Pashutan Vikas Yojana, since April 2019. What does the feed and fodder development submission talk about it? This submission aims towards strengthening of fodder seed chain to improve availability of certified fodder seed required for fodder reproduction and increasing entrepreneurs for establishment of fodder block slash A, bailing slash silage making units through incentivation, incentivization. The submission on fodder and feed development will address the problems of scarcity of animal feed resources in order to give a push to the livestock sector, making it a comprehensive, competitive enterprise for India and also to harness its export potential. Let me repeat once again. This scheme, this submission will address the problem of scarcity of animal feed resources in order to give a push to the livestock sector, making it a competitive enterprise for India and also to harness its export potential. The major objective is to reduce the deficit to nil. And the sub commission, the sub mission component four talks about establishment of high capacity fodder block making units, fodder block making units, establishment of high capacity fodder block making units. Dr. Harivinder Singh will Harinder Singh will explain these components very effectively during his talk. Focus needed on fodder shortage in India. I would like to quote from the article published in Business Line on April 28, 2020, written by Dr. Pangaj Parmar and Professor Hari Krishna Mishra from Institute of Rural Management, Anand. Adequate feeds and fodder is essential for productivity of the livestock. Growing ga gaps between demand and supply warrant concern. As per the 20th livestock census released last year, the total livestock population in India is 535.78 million which is an increase of 4.6% over the previous census in 2012. The bovine, bovine population is 302.79 million, consisting of cattle, buffalo, mithun, and yak. The livestock growth and development is continued by the adequate availability of feed and fodder. Supply deficit. Availability of feed and fodder remains a major area of concern. There is a gap between this demand and supply in the country. As per the estimates of Indian Council of Agroforestry Research, affiliated National Institute of Animal Nutrition and Physiology, the deficit in the requirement 
and the availability of tribe fodder, green fodder, and concentrates during 2015 was to the extent of 21%, 26%, and 34% respectively. This is likely to increase to 23% and 40% and 38%. And Means the deficit will be 23% in you know, dry fodder, 40% in green fodder, and 38% in concentrates respectively by 2025. The Department of Animal Husbandry and Dairy acknowledges that there is a need to adopt the practice of land use with multiple crops in a sustainable manner. On the issue of lack of adequate and genuine data on production and the availability of various types of fodder and feed grains, the livestock policy 2013 has started. Competent agencies will be encouraged to generate real time and time period data on fodder production. Competent agencies will be encouraged to generate real time and the time period data on fodder production, food grain production, feed grade production, land availability for grass, gra grassland and other pasture grounds, etc. It is from the Live National Livestock Policy 2013. Unlike food crops, the Agricultural Ministry does not collect data on fodder crops, whose availability poses a serious challenge in increasing productivity. There is no agency to provide precise data on fodder crops production, productivity, and adoption of improved varieties and technologies for effective policy formulation and research planning according to you know, IGFRI. The government must play a proactive role in promoting fodder cultivation so that the increase in milk production is sustained in the long run. Incentives such as, such as creating fodder cooperatives, creating fodder cooperatives, increasing the common grazing lands for an adequate supply of feed and fodder for the milk animals, which could sustain the milk production. Water irrigation cooperatives related to the fodder cooperatives for adequate water supply and fodder production. This is what the, the article from the Irma, you know, talks about it. Fodder crops are crops that are cultivated primarily for animal feed. By extension, natural grasslands and pastures are included whether they are cultivated or not. But fodder crops may be classified as, as either temporary or permanent crops. Fodder production planning for commercial dairy farms. I would like to quote once again from another article written by Mr. Prapakar Babu, former Deputy Gen uh, General Manager, you know, UPL Advanta Limited, Hyderabad. Feeding animals with any fodder is not enough. Feeding animal animals with any fodder is not enough. Animal require a balanced diet. The feed should have the right proportion of different nutrients, energy, protein, vitamins, and minerals. And he also talks about that principles of fodder production planning, safe use of resources, land, water, fertility, and power, meeting the animal requirements at all times, even when food production falls too low either on the seasonal cycle or due to unpredictable costs. Margin over all feed cost, ration balancing, roughages and concentrates. Development and popularization of green fodder production technologies. You know, National Dairy Development Board has got a lot of schemes. It cooperates with ICARs, IGFRI, and all in their coordinated you know, uh, research projects centers on forage production and utilization. It also, you know, involved in development of agronomic techniques for forage crops with high relevance to dairy farmers. It also implements integrated fodder development model, fodder development in drought prone area, bio, biogas slurry utilization in fodder cultivations. I also wish to quote from the another, you know, website, insightsonindia.com. 
the significance of submission on fodder and feed recently announced by the indian government is underscored by the fact that livestock is the major source of cash income for about 13 crore marginal farmers and is an insurance in the event of crop failure the lack of good quality feed and fodder impacts the productivity levels of a cattle of cattle as about 200 million indians are involved in dairy and livestock farming the scheme is important from the perspective of poverty elevation the excellent enterprises private limited ganna punjab state india was the first company introduced commercial concepts of farmers as back as 1995 as per the publications which includes total mixed ration densified feed, feed, feed blocks mineral blocks fodder harvesters sun dried fodder pellets and so on and so forth i would like to quote an article written by today's guest speaker dr harinder singh make hay while the sun shines in his article in the opening paragraph he quotes very effectively this proverb from our school days has more significance economically than people generally take it grammatically as simply proverb very important statement as feed and fodder constitutes 65 to 70 percent of dairy farm economics and affects directly the balance sheet of our dairy farms fourth right view more nutritious and well balanced economically cost effective feed is an important factor that is ignored time and again by dairy farmers proteins from fodder cost much less than from costly cakes etc in concentrates and take the example of soya beans binola etc according to dr harinder singh as most states or parts of india are deficit of orders farmers of punjab farmers of haryana farmers of up with fodder surplus area can adopt it as a supplementary business having a lot of export potential in gulf european union etc where canada united states and pakistan supply bulk consignments so it is a good opportunity to explore for long term outputs in addition to serving our own daily requirements it's a very good action plan which i have quoted from his published document article now with this background let us turn to the address of dr harinder singh fodder researcher specialist excellent enterprise private limited kanna punjab state india on the topic commercial processing of fodders next game changer in dairy today's topic will motivate and galvanize the participants watching our telecast through facebook.com sobit university india youtube.com sobit university in or linkedin.com slash company slash sobit dash university for establishing agri-tech startups more than 6500 agri-tech startups one per block or even about 2.25 lakh agri-tech startups one per each gram panchayat for undertaking commercial processing of orders taking advice from a person a scientist a researcher in the area of order development dr harinder singh in this webinar dr harinder singh will deliberate on next green white revolution is both next green and white revolution and also will talk about how dairy farming will be more convenient profitable with their simple scientific products fodder silage in bales fodder hay blocks pellets total mixed ration densified fodder blocks treated straw blocks urea molasses mineral blocks mineral blocks licks and machinery let me invite our guest speaker to address the participants 
Before that, let me introduce our guest speaker to the audience. Dr. Harinder Singh was born on 12th May 1964 and had qualifications B.S. Agri Honours in 1986 and major in Animal Nutrition and MSc Animal Nutrition in 1989. He started in 1992 India's first plant as excellent cattle forwarders, forwarders private limited to commercially process forwarders as silages, A's, TMRs, mineral licks blocks, and 1996 joint venture with National Dairy Development Board for licks in cold process under guidance of Dr. Varghese Korean. And in 1998, exported India's first shipment to United Arab Emirates with, K pellets, uh, with hay pellets and straw blocks. Dr. Harinder Singh has traveled widely in 64 countries for training, seminar, consulting, etc., exclusively on fodders, densified fodders, TMR, mineral oleic blocks, etc. Dr. Harinder Singh has been consulting on silage, hay, mineral licks blocks, TMR, treaters, straw production and commercial processing, specialty in honey processing, jaggery and other food related recipes. I welcome our guest speaker, Dr. Harinder Singh, today to, uh, to the National Webinar Series on Doubling Farmers Income by 2022, Atman Nirvar Bharat in Agriculture, to talk on the topic, commercial processing of fodders, next game changer in dairy. I welcome Dr. Harinder Singh, over to you. Uh, good morning and good evening, uh, Dr. Moni, many thanks. Uh, provide this platform and uh, to be here. Uh, I was uh, of the opinion that uh, this uh, fodder uh, with the increasing cost and uh, with the uh, uh, raw material ingredients worldwide, like everyone is looking. So we need to uh, push up our efforts and push up our, uh, uh, I mean, initiatives to promote order processing as economical uh, substitute for uh, nutrient-rich uh, diets to the animals. And uh, I welcome and uh, greet our fellow viewers in India and abroad that uh, for the valuable time they will spare and uh, they will have attention for this uh, uh, views and uh, on theme topics how order processing can uh, uh, not only revolutionize the dairy sector, the white revolution, uh, but also it will help to curtail uh, the overhead charges, overhead expenses of dairy farmers to improve their balance sheets and uh, to make uh, farmers more uh, earning as uh, farmer doubling farmer income by 2022. So we will try to brief on uh, the theme topics and uh, I will see uh, not to uh, be too much uh, statistical uh, because uh, with the, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, those uh, uh, search type or uh, those uh, fundamentals, uh, the theme topic, it uh, goes off from the shelf. And uh, I will see how we can uh, uh, promote, how we can uh, uh, address the views, the entrepreneurs, and all concerned attending this webinar currently or later on on YouTube or over the social media. So let me start with my slides and with my presentation. So I will see here uh, with the screen. Uh, So, uh, you are looking uh, on your screen, please. The slides. Yes, 
it is not Sorry, visible it was anything it's not visible hmm. can i can i ask mr uh, manish to present <laughs> Okay, so I think it is okay now. Okay, yeah, uh, Mr. Manish. Uh, it is on the screen. It is not. It is not. Hmm. Okay, let me let me try. Uh, Mr. Manish is here. Okay. Oh, I think it is okay. It, it, it is coming, please. Go. Okay. Go to the store. Yes. So commercial processing of orders, next game changer in dairy, as the title is. Uh, Singh Sab, you go to storyboard and then you know slideshow, slideshow, and then from the from first screen, you have okay. to go to you go to slideshow button and then from the beginning slideshow upper slideshow upper the top, uh, top line may have ah, okay. okay from okay. from ah, okay. good okay. So, as the theme is commercial processing of orders, so what currently our farmers were doing, and uh, the, especially for the ruminants, that they used to prefer fresh orders. So, when the fresh order is uh, served to the animal, they need to process it for a few hours, then it goes to rumination, then goes into the blood the nutrients then converted into milk. So that need a lot of time and uh, energy. Instead, the dairy developed countries many years ago, they have discovered and they have a lot of uh, done work on this. They try to present this uh, pre-processed fodders, good for digestion, good to convert into blood and into milk. So immediately after finishing my MSc in 89, so whatever we learned in the library, in the classes, in the classrooms. So we did try to replicate those things. Like uh, uh, this is uh, my uh, wrapper of uh, mineral block, three kg mineral block. Uh, and uh, you can see over the screen folders, silages, haze, stores, mineral block, mineral lake. I have never written here that uh, we need feed a uh, few years, like it is 30 years back. So our animals, they were low yielding and low performing and uh, they need first the processed fodders. And uh, we can save uh, millions of tons of soybean, maize, blah, blah, blah. Uh, just after feeding uh, processed fodders. He is like farmer, he can prepare at his own backyard or front yard or at the farm. Uh, similarly, silages, many farmers, they have practiced it over years in the pits, in the bags. And uh, for the mineral blocks and mineral lakes, a lot of research was done in the institutes to present it in more uh, uh, presentable form uh, with the slow releasing nitrogen with the molasses, with the minerals to uh, avail better digestion of the fibers and uh, to improve animal health with uh, this economical uh, supplement. So from 92, we did start this uh, journey and we did uh, start this uh, uh, mission and uh, People were not aware at that time, no internet was there and uh, not much uh, over the uh, system. Uh, and uh, people were uh, stereotyped 
they were hesitant to adopt uh, silage or hay in 92 and uh, minerals uh, were not at that time necessary the prices of milk was very low so the economics never matched even not today uh, at that time the price of milk was very low so uh, the farmers and the bureaucrats and the economists and the dairy specialists they tried to ignore these facts that one day after 20 years after 10 years we need to adopt these uh, economical nutritious uh, alternatives so in this journey in, in 10 years 15 years uh, farmers could not match the prices of inputs and their uh, uh, prices for milk or uh, for the products so people started thinking that dairy is not uh, favorable dairy is not uh, profitable whereas in dairy developed countries like uh, israel denmark new zealand their gdp is totally dependent on dairy and we are not uh, here supporting that fact and we are uh, we are considering dairy as a supplementary income for the farmer uh, one animal two animal two animals four animals like that uh, we are not considering dairy as industry at that time also so this is how uh, in 92 uh, we we did try to start highlight that this will be the game changer in future and today we should adopt it so this is how uh, we started and we have lot of struggle we have lot of failures we have lot of challenges at that time no machinery was there silage was also sometimes we need external help from our professors from experts so not not much support was there also at that time and uh, we faced less success and more failures but uh, the uh, mission was sure that one day it will be big industry and uh, this is how uh, india feeds and serves to the largest cattle population of the world everyone we know as well as the largest human population so we have two challenges uh, we have to feed our animals and we have to feed uh, our uh, human our kids our families uh, unfortunately or by chance some of the ingredients are common for both so there we have to see the competition like maize rice cutting or like those things so there uh, we also could not uh, plan any strategy or any plan like in very developed countries they have uh, developed and discovered alternate uh, feed sources for the animals like from the based of the uh, food processing industry uh, and to treat with them uh, enzymes or uh, some uh, other methods to prepare cattle feed or cattle uh, i mean uh, servings uh, from uh, agro industrial factories like uh, jam plants pea plants so here we could not develop that industry also instead we uh, kept on feeding both the uh, uh, to both of uh, animals as well as to human the common feed ingredients and uh, in many times we have been forced to import like maize two years back we imported 11 million ton maize from ukraine just to 11 million ton 11 million ton so see our foreign exchange and the energy we have spent uh, just to feed the human and the animal so this is how uh, here uh, fodders they can serve better uh, like uh, the straw part that should go to the animal and the grain parts or the the useful part can go or may go to the human so this is uh, uh, the challenge i mean we should uh, either face today or we will face more drastically in the future so during uh, uh, most of the time of the year here like we see during the rainy season or during some of the time uh, we have lot of fodder in the absence of uh, processing industry in the absence of any commercial uh, handling hay making silage making we used to overfeed the animals 
the ruminants they have uh, different systems you cannot change their diet frequently they need to feed uh, most of the time uh, the the even uh, feed uh, recipes even feed uh, system uh, because of uh, disturbance in their ruminant uh, system uh, the microflora to perform at peak level so during most uh, uh, of the time uh, again our animals they go under feeding because when there is a, a crop season we overfeed them we never preserve them as hay we never keep them as uh, treated stores so either we left them or we burn them or we overfeed them or to the animals even uh, we have seen in goshalas and other we, we used to overfeed the animals just in the absence that uh, uh, we could not develop uh, this processing industry during the uh, last few years and uh, during uh, underfeeding especially uh, people, uh, the animals as well as human they affect during drought during uh, floods rain snow so there is again disturbance in the performance of the animals in the human also so we need uh, to uh, there was a good opportunity for the processing industry that they may process it and sell and make money for the year also it is good service to the animals as well and uh, if we uh, present we process the fodders we present to the farmers that will also earn good money and animal will also perform better so this is how that uh, we again lost the opportunities and uh, we put the blame that there is not uh, an uh, economical uh, venture and uh, we have never uh, considered it uh, uh, in this fashion and we ignored just that uh, uh, these uh, uh, exotic breeds especially hf and those they need uh, they processed fodders because they are quick to make uh, blood and quick to make uh, milk so this uh, for, uh, fodder processing there is a opportunity for the entrepreneurs for the industry uh, they can make good uh, uh, i mean business uh, as dr mori has just shared there is a huge deficit uh, deficit between uh, production processing and supply requirement by the animals by the dairy farmers Uh, for the green fodder for the stores stores uh, as everyone knows the whole world knows we are burning and uh, green fodder we are never processing uh, this is uh, the value addition industry and commercial processing of fodders uh, add to growth of dairy in india but can revolutionize it uh, this is uh, uh, how silage is if green fodder we consider silages and hays silage is mostly prepared from like non legumes from gramini family and hays as you know it we prefer from legumes uh, so the green fodders it not only yields good earning to the farmer uh, against uh, this paddy wheat uh, cycle and other environment uh, issues Uh, pollution water extra uh, also fodders yield good uh, uh, returns to the farmers to the industry to the dairy but we should uh, prefer round the year silages mostly multi cut uh, fodders and uh, fodders with more dry matter and protein <coughs> similarly treated stores uh, as i shared uh, uh, earlier that uh, in gramini mostly gramini family uh, wheat oats paddy uh, where the grain part goes to the human preferably the straw we left it as such or we ignore it uh, if we treat the straw with the bacteria with the enzymes uh, to make available more uh, digestible and uh, to Uh, debond uh, lignin and hemicellulose to uh, 
make it prepare for better digestibility. So there is good chance uh, to make good business, to make good industry, and uh, more than 20 million ton stock we ignored every year. So here we can make good uh, uh, nutrition to the animals, to the uh, good opportunity for the industry. So straws, I mean, we cannot go without straw to the remnants. Straw forms important part uh, for the roughage, but uh, simple straw doesn't serve the purpose. Only treated straws, as the Israelis and Dutch people they are making, <coughs> they serve the purpose. The digestibility improves and uh, animal intake less. Then there are TMRs. TMRs are uh, uh, like a uh, few years back, we developed uh, this uh, densified fodder blocks, Peli. Peli is in folk language. Uh, it is in presentable form in 14 kg and 22 kg. So fodder blocks uh, and uh, TMR blocks, those are prepared in the same compactor machine. So it is highly densified, good for transportation. Uh, to far away uh, within this country, like sometimes there are floods or drought. So these densified fodder blocks that can be transported from one end to other end, even export is too much. Uh, Pakistan export these TMR blocks, uh, ship loads to Gulf countries and in their folk language, it is called want. Uh, like in our language, it is Peli, in Pakistan it is want. So TMR is big industry in uh, all dairy developed countries. It uh, reduces your labor charges and uh, it is good for commercial farms. So uh, it can be balanced well with protein, with roughage, with uh, concentrates, mineral. So it can be tailor-made like uh, with the milk yield of the animal. There will be different TMR block for uh, uh, 8 liter, 10 liter animal and 15 liter animals. So uh, these uh, uh, overall, uh, the green fodder we can explore as good industry that can revolutionize uh, the farming sector and dairy farm. So one factor that uh, I was looking uh, during the last 30 years, uh, it is the lack of coordination. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we do not have the mechanism or uh, I have not seen that uh, industry farmer searcher, they sit on the same table, they discuss the issues and challenges and solutions. Like in other countries, there are interactions, there are seminars, there are uh, uh, many uh, get togethers, uh, wherein the farmers or the industry approaches the researchers or the researcher shares uh, is lab to land program with the farmer, with the industry. Uh, we have uh, uh, lost that opportunity here also. Uh, in the uh, result, there are not better outputs. We need uh, to get better outputs uh, for right, starting from seed sowing for the farmers. The, like a uh, few years back, two, two, three years back, we have imported Napier from Indonesia, red Napier, Penicetum, and uh, Super Napier. Now it has developed in many institutes, and we used to present free of cost or uh, to our uh, research institutes, to NDRI, Karnad, to PAU, Gadwasu, Ludhiana so that they can multiply here and uh, they can distribute uh, among the farmers or they can sell at uh, uh, convenient prices. Uh, we need to import or uh, put these, uh, uh, present these uh, interactions uh, among the industry farmer searchers for uh, starting from seed and then processing technologies uh, like uh, 
industry they do not know the better processing techniques they do not know the machinery they don't have any knowledge similarly researchers sometimes they need to perform some trial in their lab they do not have any know how on the machinery again value addition the industry they do like in field manufacturing you might be looking they do on their own no no scientific uh, following no scientific uh, techniques they do not bother about the nutrient balance so they are doing feed production per ton per kg so the, the, these uh, uh, i mean the interactions they will improve the performance of everyone and they will uh, it will uh, improve the the total industry output and make better uh, i mean performance for everyone machinery manufacturing is again a challenge like a uh, few years back we did try to start silage plants in india but unfortunately there is no silage baler then we imported few machines from italy and turkey uh, the harvesters we do not have any harvester with grain cracker with the shredless technology then r and d uh, services for example the industry it uh, request the uh, researcher or institute that we need this type of uh, search search on uh, uh, this uh, straw digestibility the tdn the silica challenge in um, uh, feed fodder i mean there is no no r and d coordination also then in the end the products are there over the table or in the factory Uh, there are marketing challenges for the industry also so here again the government institutes the research institutes uh, they should coordinate for the marketing also sometimes there are demand from uh, outside india but uh, here industry doesn't know how to export the hay the minerals or like that so if we see overall here Uh, in india or dairy as a venture 60 to 70% of the cost of uh, the, the dairy farm it is from the feed alone so the balance sheet is greatly affected by what you are giving and what you are taking so we need to uh, see it as uh, babu rail mein babu jail mein if we present a better uh, balanced uh, nutrients and better balanced diets economically only then the farm will be in uh, profit otherwise there will be problem of uh, repeat breeding abortion poor calving low milk yield less fat less snf so uh, overall the, the game is interconnected right from seed sowing to end the game is interconnected if someone is performing low or someone is not performing well the other is suffering bad to achieve profitability and overcome challenges of handling transportation storage and management fuels back diesel was very cheaper labor was very cheaper other products were other inputs were cheaper we ignored everything we ignored handling we ignored transportation and uh, like fodders stores they are very low cost items only rupees 3 4 5 per kg so we ignored all these things uh, now when these input uh, costs they have gone up the transportation the labor and the other things so we have started looking at our balance sheets that uh, input cost is going up whereas the prices of milk and other products they are still there they are not moving so fast you have seen prices of uh, soya bean how it affected the performance of poultry farms and dairy farms worldwide not only in india and uh, the prices of maize and now currently the all the prices of cakes 
especially with the increase in prices of oils worldwide uh, we should not speculate we should not expect that these prices will go down ever instead we should make up our mind prices may go up or stay here so in that case uh, forages orders processed orders and these uh, uh, like mineral blocks or mineral lake stores they will serve the purpose processed to fit in the budget of the dairy farmer and to economize the dairy uh, otherwise there is no solution we cannot uh, uh, offer the concentrate feeds to the animals costing now at 28 rupees 30 rupees 32 rupees per kg that is not the solution the solution is sit consider discuss how we can enrich and value add our fodders so that uh, now the interesting thing is that uh, common farmer is uh, serving this wheat stock tudi to its animal rupees 14 per kg in bombay rupees 10 to 11 per kg today in delhi rupees 12 per kg in jk and rupees 8 kg in ludhiana so see whereas we are selling silage that is too much rich with 8.5 protein and fermented rich food at rupees 5 per kg 5 or 525 whatever so only value added and enriched fodders they can economize the dairy they can add profit and they can make our industry better they can make happy to our farmers and as dr moni has shared to increase or doubling the income of the farmers by 22 so we need to if we have not done anything in last few years let us do no we have the opportunities we have the gadgets we have the technology we have the opportunity we should not lose chance now. so you might have seen during last 4 5 years uh, that uh, with the incoming of fodder plants no total 142 silage plants in india and uh, three big plants of uh, hay and tm are coming up in india in mp in punjab in gujarat three big farm uh, these processing plants so they will uh, process hay they will process uh, tmr and uh, these mineral blocks are also coming so during the last 4 5 years uh, with the incoming of uh, fodder processing plants uh, you have seen uh, farmers dairy farmers they are focusing now more on increasing his herd size his uh, management and he has less to bother about managing his fodder or uh, the other overheads and the challenges like uh, to serve the animal with more even and economical feeding recipes like i have shared that uh, ruminants they need more even and uh, balanced feeding uh, they we should not uh, change frequently with every fodder with every increase in ingredients or feed we should not change their uh, recipe we should not change their uh, feeding system even should try to keep it balanced or even around the year with minor changes if unavoidable so deficient uh, regimes due to flaw, uh, sometimes droughts flood crop failure uh, they are beyond control uh, from the human so processed fodders if industry will be here and uh, the farmer have the uh, processed and valuated fodders so we can uh, face the challenges uh, like these uh, droughts or floods or snow or whatever so uh, otherwise we are serving uh, suffering and we are losing currently uh, we are losing uh, in the absence of processed uh, fodder industry then uh, to make available and rich fodder at uh, time farmers doors uh, stay without affecting by market fluctuations 
So see, if a processing industry will be here, like in Israel, Denmark, and other countries, uh, there will not be too much fluctuations and farmer have the better calculations and projections around the year. Uh, whereas uh, with the fluctuation in uh, maize, uh, soybean, uh, these uh, cakes, uh, the farmer cannot calculate or uh, make projections. Uh, he doesn't know when or how much the fluctuation will suffer. And uh, you have seen uh, uh, recently uh, from one year, like uh, the prices of uh, soybean and uh, uh, this maize, many poultry farms, they have uh, closed or uh, they have suffered badly. Similarly, dairy farms, but uh, the dairy farmers having their uh, silage stocks, their uh, store stocks, they have well uh, hedged, they have well protected, insulated, and they have got less effect of these price fluctuation. So these feeding concepts need more attention by our policy makers, uh, by our uh, searchers, by different dairy uh, and animal husbandry departments, uh, that uh, it can play a big role, not only in GDP or in uh, white milk revolution. Uh, it can add, uh, I mean, the total GDP the employment, the rural uh, settlements better and uh, make India better uh, light. Sometimes we used to see here uh, during June, July, especially during deficit uh, periods, milk stocks, milk powder stocks dried up. And uh, people, the milk plants, they have no choice except to import the SMP skim milk powder and those things. Whereas the local people, they oppose it, that with the import, uh, the local industry. I mean, when there is an imbalance, one will beep and other will make happy. One will uh, lose from the pocket, other will make uh, the uh, money. So it is not sure who is making the money and who is losing. So the better alternative is uh, the simple solution uh, that we should promote this uh, fodder processing industry and uh, we should uh, uh, serve to our animal. We should uh, 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 encourage the dairy sector uh, as uh, money spinner, uh, revenue spinner to the country. So in the, in the beginning, <coughs> processed fodders, so we, we have discussed about the silage. So silage is the uh, uh, processed and preserved form of the fodder that uh, initially in 95, 98, uh, in those years, few uh, progressed dairy farmers, few uh, advanced dairy farmers, they used to uh, make it in the pits, in uh, 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 loose pits uh, at their farm. And then a the few, they came forward and they make it uh, cemented and RCC and uh, then started the, the usefulness and uh, this industry of silage. The farmers, they get convinced uh, that this is the better form of uh, nutrients and we cannot go without silage if we have to run the farm in profit. So orders uh, uh, with grains from Gramney family, they are good to make silage uh, due to their better quality for, uh, for uh, alcohols and uh, glucose, starch, and uh, they produce good silage. Although people, uh, they make uh, silage from uh, other crops also. Silage, uh, during silage, we need to focus on uh, harvesting stage uh, with the proper moisture and dry matter combinations. So uh, we need to see if there is a sufficient dry matter from uh, 28, 30 to 32, 34% and the balance uh, is moisture and it should be on milking stage with the grains uh, and we should have uh, uh, 
the lower two three leaves uh, dried or brownish uh, then uh, we should chop it with uh, not uh, these uh, uh, simple choppers because uh, they do not uh, crack the grains and the grains they go off through the feces and it is wastage of the industry wastage of the farmer wastage for the animal so shredderized technology uh, now everyone knows uh, we need to select uh, the harvesters the machines uh, with the proper uh, grain cracking and shredderized technology for better shredding for better rumination better digestion uh, to convert into better milk fat as an and uh, sometimes we have seen that uh, farmer they harvest the fodder they uh, uh, keep it uh, in the farm for one day or two day the whole heat goes off the whole energy release of uh, whereas once you harvest the crop you should immediately ensil it or uh, uh, make it anaerobic it right uh, for proper fermentation by anaerobic bacteria so that lactobacillus and other bacteria they can perform better so we should properly and immediately should uh, uh, ensil it keep it airtight so that the aerobic bacteria the fungus and other harmful uh, 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 organism they may not uh, affect or they may not damage the quality of the silage so once the fodder gets properly ensiled as everybody knows uh, it uh, uh, the heat is released uh, as uh, anaerobic bacteria starts multiplying and uh, uh, it lowers the ph from 6.5 to 3.8 to 4.2 so uh this is how uh, the silage no i think it is not no fairy tale silage is uh, everybody's uh, fancy and everybody's baby people are commonly producing good quality silage i have seen and uh, uh, i think uh, i mean we should not uh, i have written everything in detail and uh, you may request for the this slide and presentation so in nutshell people they are now well expert to produce uh, good quality silage we need uh, 23 25 days for the uh, baled silage uh, before opening and 35 40 days because uh, in bunker or pit silage there is still some oxygen and uh, in uh, baled silage there is better compaction so we can open it uh, uh, earlier in aquaments sometimes we use for uh, proper fermentation or better fermentation and uh, uh, to control quality damage or fungus uh, toxins and improve the palatability so different companies they are offering their different uh, in aquaments <clears throat> so this is uh, some of the parameters that uh, we need to keep on checking with every lot with every Uh, uh, our uh, production slot uh, pH and protein. Uh, the smell here. The smell is uh, if you have a, a smell like vinegar. So it it is sign that it is good fermentation and the color also. But uh, if there is a, like a coffee like smell or blackish or coffee color. dark uh, grayish color then you should uh, stop feeding to the animal first you should check and get it laboratory tested for uh, fungus or for other nematodes so this is uh, how the harvesting the stage of harvesting and plant uh, appearance you need to look uh, like this uh, the the uh, milking stage and the, the this uh, dead stage and this is the shredless that with the grain cracker and uh, with the plants the low two three leaves should dry so this is uh, the guidelines or the some of the tips uh, before you harvest 
but uh, never ignore this uh, uh, moisture dry matter combinations that we have discussed earlier and good quality silage uh, some of the observations uh, without going to the laboratory uh, the color the smell and the fermentation uh, so when you have to introduce the silage into your animals diet so try to start with less so that uh, they may start accepting it and uh, within 4 5 6 days you may go up to 70 80% and balance uh, your routine uh, ingredients like straw or feed so animal uh, will relish and uh, you will see excellent results on uh, milk fat and uh, body eye color you will see so hay hay is uh, simply the dehydrated form of the fodder Uh, wherein we remove a uh, lot of uh, the moisture generally 70 80 moisture in uh, most of the fodders are there so uh, common farmers they can sun dry it but the better form is uh, that uh, let you sun dry for one or two day and then you remove, uh, uh, play the uh, through the dryer so that uh, the nematodes the fungus the bacteria the harmful parts uh, they can go off from 50 to 60 degree and uh, the proteins may not get damaged if we dry it after uh, 70 60 degrees celsius the most of the proteins and uh, the vitamins and other enzymes they will uh, be available they will get lost so uh, after uh, drying this uh, fodder we can pelletize it like this and uh, we can compress it into blocks handy blocks uh, 25 kg 50 kg it depends uh, what type of machine you are uh, putting so the the usefulness of uh, hay is much uh, that uh, it can compete with your uh, concentrate feed the protein comes like uh, 60 14% 16% 18% and it can compete with your rupees 28 30 per kg concentrate feed and uh, like in ruminants the fodder proteins are much better and more economical than your costly other proteins so tmrs tmrs as you might have seen uh, we were uh, producing these 14 kg or 22 kg uh, pelli blocks and uh, these pellets we can also produce uh, and uh, these uh, uh, oxy deoxygenated vacuum packing we can also produce so in uh, asia like uh, our uh, diets are mostly fibrous we provide more uh, roughage so therein we need to balance it with proper concentrates vitamins and minerals so uh, total mix ration they are good for goshalas for uh, low performing animals 2 3 4 5 liter per day animals and uh, to the city people there they keep only two animals four animals three animals so it is more economical for to handle to store to transport and uh, also good for uh, high hilly areas where uh, they people keep animal for their own milk requirements but they cannot go to take uh, green fodders or uh, they cannot uh, go like for 2 3 months outdoors uh, animals as well as human they stay inside so these tmrs are uh, uh, good for uh, uh, those conditions for the industry it is again good opportunity and uh, you may see over the net also in uh, other uh, dairy developed countries uh, it is a very big industry and uh, fortunately we have everything here uh, in our country side green fodder straws concentrates and uh, industry people they can make better tmr uh, presentations so uh, like uh, you are looking uh, what is going on in glasgow there is too much hue cry and every 
one is uh, trying to project uh, himself or his country responsibly and uh, the younger generation the people they are protesting that uh, you are killing us so in india we never discuss uh, uh, on dairy platforms climate changes so how the climate change you have seen uh, in kerala in uh, chennai or in every part of the country that uh, how climate change is affecting the performance of the human and the performance of the animals also uh, during corona crisis you have seen the uh, immunity factor that people they have suddenly started over speaking this uh, immunity factor so climate change we need to see how it will affect our dairy our crops and our uh, human kind so uh, again here fodder will be insulators fodder will be good option fodder will be good uh, alternatives processed fodders and moreover uh, we need to uh, apply it and ai tools as uh, dr moni is uh, suggesting uh, that uh, uh, when we have the technology we need to apply to counter climate changes and uh, see how, how this uh, uh, we can face the challenges instead of uh, going to surrender to the climate change and going to lose everywhere we need to see and we need to uh, start putting up actions immediately <clears throat> rain drought temperature all in the coming years you will see uh, 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 they, they will affect us badly so some suggestions and uh, request to the government officials to the policy makers to the bureaucrats to such institutes to the scientists uh, consider to promote fodder processing uh, at par with dairy milk processing and feed production industry so whenever uh, i go we, we are consulting with some uh, fodder processing uh, plants so whenever we visit with the entrepreneur to the bankers the bankers their agriculture officers their agriculture uh, uh, experts they start asking surprisingly what is a silage what is fodder so uh, they they do not uh, know if fodder is the industry or fodder is uh, fodder can be a, a big industry so we need to put up efforts that uh, uh like feed production or milk processing fodder should be uh considered and promoted as industry the good part is that uh, during the recently launched this nlm scheme by dahd dairy animal husbandry department uh, central government uh, the honorable ministers dr girira singh ji and uh, dr rupala ji they have made uh, this uh, fodder processing with some incentives so uh, the members the listeners the viewers if they need the copy they can request us we can send them the pdf with all the guidelines and uh, there are uh, incentives there are subsidies on hay making tmr making straw processing industry so you will get a good uh, i mean the opportunity then most of uh, these uh, financial institutions the, the funding agencies they still have to see that fodder is a industry uh, it's an industry and uh, they need to uh, put up uh, some uh, notice some some information some guidelines uh, so as to promote uh, this uh, fodder uh, industry uh, they do not consider that fodder will be the assets or collateral and uh, they do not uh, consider that uh, uh, this processed fodder again goes uh, into appreciation like uh, any other product so they they need to update and they need to uh, inform uh, in this then to prove uh, promote fodder industry uh, uses of more silages among the animals government should create fodder banks the fodder banks uh, this term was used uh, during the time of dr kurian sa uh, in 94 96 to create fodder banks uh, or buffer stocks uh, well before like drought 
we are looking uh, since the last 200 years drought flood again and again this uh, yamuna is flowing above mark saraswati is flowing uh, this uh, uh, ganga is flowing uh, above danger mark every every years we are listening so we need to create a fodder banks so it will help uh, uh, to the industry it will help to the farmers that buffer stock should be created before like snow every year in himachal in jk or in other reaches so snow every year it affects the animal performance it keeps the animals and human indoors so we need to provide them fodder banks buffer stocks well before the snow starts and uh, in the end fodder seeds and machinery prices should be offered at uh, subsidized prices so uh, this is how do also already offered in nlm but uh, few people and few agencies they are recognizing it and they they are more in the end uh, i will like to share uh, our company's uh, efforts during the last 30 years we have uh, seen this uh, not in 20 years uh, during last 4 5 7 years the quick uh, emergence of fodder processing units like i have told you uh, 142 silage plants are now here in india pan india in uh, punjab in uh, andhra in gujarat in many parts of india and uh, the entrepreneurs and uh, uh, they have seen it as a fast emerging uh, industry and uh, many starts up also some people from other industry some it specialists they have come up and uh, they have put up uh, silage units and many are considering and putting up these uh, hay uh, units and tissue store units so it is uh, uh, i mean nutrient wise in tonnage in uh, millions of rupees uh, as dr ak verma our colleague from nddv he has told that processed fodder it can remove the poverty of india it can feed our kids well so we need separate debate, uh, debate on that uh, uh, and it it needs a lot of time but uh, processed fodders we can get tonnage of fat tonnage of snf additionally and uh, tonnage of smf skim milk powder for our kids simply with processed fodders and uh, it will be a big game changer in uh, dairy farming in uh, to counter the soaring prices of uh, proteins i mean instead of considering soya bean and other costly proteins why not we go to cheaper economical better fodder proteins and then uh, value added rich nutrient fodders round the year it will serve the dairy farmers more economically uh, it will improve the balance sheet of the dairy farm and uh, it will uh, help to improve his uh, herd size processed uh, fodders in animals dairy ration will spare more costly ingredients such as wheat maize etc to human kind to our kids those are underfed or under nourished uh, and they, uh, the prices will get better balance if animals they get separate feed and human they get separate feed uh, like in dairy developed countries in usa in new zealand it is called rendered industry so we need separate debate on that rendered industry they add value to our products they offer to the animals and uh, they keep spare the valuable grains and other things to the human kind government should come forward to offer incentive funding to encourage more fodder processing units and uh, it will also serve the purpose of crop diversification programs by the central government and the farmers income again the political agenda of the uh, government thank you and wish you good luck and thank you dr moni and thank you everyone for sparing good time thank you thank you very much dr harinder singh 
for your very uh, you know important address promising address and also with a lot of agendas and suggestions to promote foreign industry as a more you know you know gainful industry which is needed is need of power and uh, you know in uh, you know this may be the first national webinar series to host a topic of this importance you know to the audience to the startups to the research scholars to the farmers and you have been working in this field for more than 30 years and a uh, lot of schemes are there but from your presentation from your talk through through your open you know talk then you said it that the you know where is the coordination you know you said it very clearly many other countries they consider for in for our industry for our processing industry is part of the gdp you know calculation and uh, you have given a lot of avenues and everybody's chit chatting but the thing is that it is not reaching the last mile you know uh, region that is the villages and you also said it in the last slide very nicely that suggestions to the and request to the government of government officials and policy makers that consider to promote fodder processing and value addition at par with dairy milk processing feed you know product industry with the same incentive and better subsidies and uh, and this is the right time that a policy paper should go on the basis of a talk to the ministry and uh, you know it is very important that with your 30 years of experience when even the neighboring country like pakistan can generate export lot of orders in the process to farm to various countries why can't we do it we import to feed and then you know your talk you also very clearly said it that you know that you know that like the you know government provides subsidized food to the you know the uh, human being through fair price shops and uh, you know you know in livelihood options and so on and so forth but if the fodder is made available at the doorsteps of the farmer you know throughout the you know uh, year whether there is a rain whether there is a drought whether it is a hilly area in different parts of the you know uh, uh, india at the doorstep of the farmer who you know rearing you know uh, dairy animals it is very important that our india's gdp will grow like anything people will get you know nutritious you know uh, you know animal you know uh, you know uh, dairy producers products and so on and so forth and it is a very calculated very meaningful and very thought provoking address let me summarize to the audience that you know that you know you have given you talked about your journey starting from your college studies you said that whatever you know you said it very clearly that whatever you studied you wanted to practice at the uh, at the farmers field how it can be you know uh, can be you know made available and which you have done it and after 30 years of experience now you are telling the government through this talk and i also seen your various publications that these are all the recommendation these are all the action plan like how new zealand and other dairy performing countries are doing it you know why can't we do it and uh, you know and uh, whether you know and uh, and you also given the science behind it the research behind it and the industry behind it and why we can't sit together you know starting from the farmers and the researchers startups ngos government officials and uh, industries to sit together and to see to that how to give a red carpet welcome for fodder processing industry and in some way you know some uh, documentation it was available that 
most of the things are going as a waste. For example, you take the banana one. We have got about 264 crore plant, you know, plant after removing the, uh, you know, uh, produce product. It gets, you know, the, the pseudo stems, it gets wasted. Even to clear these uh, pseudo stems from the field for the next uh, season, planting season, the farmer has to spend 15 rupees per plant. So each one can give 50 rupees if it is processed. The wastage is processed. So 264 crore into 50, it comes about something like 13,000 crores per annum from banana crop alone. And it also provides a lot of, you know, you know, uh, you know, straw, you know, the thing for fodder for, you know, animals to eat in processed form. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, like this, many crops can be, you know, you know, you have given a lot of examples and you also given a complete value chain, how it can be used for, you know, uh, you know it can be made as a preserved, you know, fodder for making it available to the farmers at doorstep, livestock, you know, dairy farmers. And it is, it is, it is, it is, we should not look at it as, as a, you know, you know, subsidized one. It is, it has to be looked at as an, you know, as on par with any other, you know, you know, fodder, you know, this uh, food uh, industry. It is very important. And you also said it that is uh, everything in this country is a problem of plenty. Large cattle population, large human population. Majority are unrefined, malnutrition, malnourished, and non-performing. And uh, and we import maize from Ukraine to feed human and animal. And some places problem of overfeeding. Some places is a problem of underfeeding during the situation of no harvest, drought situations and flood situations, rains and snow, and so on and so forth. So the thing is that, you know, we have to have a smart farming concept, smart in the in irrigated area, in rainfed area, and in, you know, in tribal area and hilly area. Smartness is important. Future farming is based on smart. You also touched that IT and AI solutions have to be used very effectively at the farm level. That's why in 2005, you wrote an article. How do well we know about our farmers? We don't have a comprehensive farm-wise and farmer-wise database to track down, to undertake evaluations and monitoring what he's doing it and how to help him. And even now, we don't have a good comprehensive database on farmer and farmer-wise, which is essential. And uh, you also said it, even though, you know, that it, it's a, what I strongly feel is it's a very big industry, 12 billion worth of, you know, worth amount of, uh, you know, 12 billion dollars worth of, you know, agriculture waste India is generating. Where waste is not in waste until we waste it. We can generate a lot of wealth. Indian farmers need not be a poor farmer. And it has to be, we, we have to generate what, industry, you, know, in, uh, you know, people want it, in not what the farmer wants it. And we have to adopt a good and agriculture practices so that our producers are sold throughout the world, the whole world. India should become a, you know, food bowl for the, you know, animals as well as also human being. And then you also said it very nicely that, you know, we have an we India is having the absence of fodder and you know value addition industry. So it is a very important you know lecture, and our honourable chancellor has joined. I welcome him, and our honourable chancellor, Dr. Harinda Singh, please stay with us, and you know and let me you know welcome our honourable chancellor. Honorable Chancellor, we welcome you to the National Webinar Series and Doubling Farm Principle Company 2022. 
you are the chief patron and the, today is the 52nd edition honorable chancellor we welcome you to the national webinar series at dublin forward sit cup 2022 you are the chief patron and the, today is and and uh, dr harinder singh is a veteran in the field and he has talked about a very important topic which can generate a lot of value additions to the income to the farming community, a lot of job opportunities. It can grow as the dairy processing industry at the same level. That is a commercial processing of fodder, a new game changer in dairy. And he talked about the technology behind it, the industry needs behind it, how the industry, you know, it can generate startups. And I gave I gave him an in a you know you know you know some sort of a mathematical calculations the country needs you know 2.25 lakh startups in fodder processing in the country fodder development and fodder processing and India wastes about something like 12 billion dollars worth of generates agriculture waste and waste is not a waste until we waste it. So let me welcome and in, you know introduce our honorable chancellor to the audience. Shri Kanwar Shekhar Vijendra is the co-founder and chancellor of Soviet Institute of Engineering and Technology, Meerut, a NAC accredited deemed to be university, and Soviet University Ganga, Uttar Pradesh. is a prominent social entrepreneur based in New Delhi and carries leadership role in many organizations. He has been nominated as the co-chairman of National Council of Education of Asochair for the year 2020-21 and 2021-22. He is also the president, Center for Education Growth and Research, a leading and only education think tank in India, New Delhi. Shri Kanwar Shekhar Vijendra is a persistent advocate of initiatives for education for all secular values crisis management through diplomatic and peaceful ways with and the globalized system of learning and harmonious coexistence he has been instrumental in the development of a number of higher educational institutes in north india including two universities many research centers and ayurveda medical college college of naturopathy and yogic sciences at the 100 bed ice hospital shri kanwar shekhar vijendra is instrumental in establishing five centers of excellence Center for Agricultural Informatics and E-Governance Research Studies, Center for Agribusiness and Disaster Management Studies, Center for Informatics Development Solutions and Applications, Center for Industry 4.0 Technology Studies and Application, and Center for Health Informatics and Computing. To promote informatics and technology led the development in rural India, is very actively involved with a number of social organizations, acknowledging his contribution in the areas of education, and other concern he has been copiously honored and awarded he has traveled widely in india and abroad to the countries like usa uk germany australia russia germany china south korea vietnam mongolia united arab emirates mauritius rwanda uganda and croatia to participate in various professional social and educational activities shri kanwar shekhar vijendra is a passionate gandhian avid reader keen learner social speaker, occasional poet, and a dreamer. We welcome our Honorable Chancellor to this very important national webinar series on doubling farmers' income by 2022 to give validatory address and engage with the discussion with the today's guest speaker. Over to Honorable thank Chancellor. You. Thank you very much, Professor Muni. Good afternoon, everybody. And thank you, Dr. Rinder Singh Ji, for joining us today. It is indeed a pleasure to have you with us. As Professor Muni has mentioned, that uh, Shobit University, through its Center for Agriculture, Informatics, and E-Governance Research Studies, and Center for Agri-Business and Disaster Management Studies, initiated a webinar series, which is moderated and chaired by Professor Muni, that how we can double the income of our farmers. You are coming from Punjab, and Punjab is a grain basket. So everything is coming from there, a very important state for farmers and a state which is known by farmers, actually. 
So when this question of doubling farmers income by 2022 uh, came and Honorable Prime Minister started sp speaking about that, many of the people were thinking that how it is possible, what to do. Is it really possible or it is just uh, a political wish? But as a university, we decided that we have to contribute in that. And the best contribution can be when we will have professionals, technocrats, bureaucrats, policy makers, practicing farmers, uh, scientists, startups, and uh, uh, people like you to discuss about new initiatives and the possibilities. I was listening when you were, your last slide especially, when you were talking about that, what may be the suggestions to the government. And definitely through this webinar series, we are happy to mention this thing that the last 52 weeks, we are having this webinar series continuously. And whatever suggestion, whatever discussion is here, it is well received by the policy makers also. Whatever we are speaking here, it is listened. And in many of the policy documents we have seen in last uh, one year, that whatever has been spoken over here, it has been incorporated directly or indirectly in the government policies also. And I am sure that once we will receive a small note from you, so Professor Muni will be in position to share it with the government bodies also. The topic of the day, actually, it was such an interesting topic. And thank you very much for uh, initiating this uh, discussion uh, on this platform also however you are working from last 30 years in this direction or more than that fodder generally what is said in our villages i hail from a small village of western uttar pradesh and you are coming from khanna maybe some nearby some pind must be there nearby so maha hamesha ye kaha jata hai ki are kya hai chara hi to hai kha legi Chara to mili jana hai, kahin se mil jayega, uski koi ahmiyat nahi hai. Gaon hai, chhod do apna kahin na kahin se peet bhar legi. So the importance of the photo is not actually appreciated, neither it has been realized, neither by the policy makers or nor by even the dairy industry also. I was surprised when you mentioned that we are importing photo. I could never imagine that thing. And countries, uh, our neighboring countries, even small countries, they are exporting for them. It means there is a big gap. When Professor Muni mentioned that there are more than 2.25 lakh startups working in this domain area. So it means there is a huge gap which need to be filled. And generally, what is the problem when uh, Professor Muni again mentioned that uh, more than 12 million uh, value agri waste is there? Actually, uh, in our nature, nothing is a waste. A cycle is there, chakra is there. Prakriti ka bhi chakra hai. It is a round circle. So when there is a circle, it cannot be a waste which is going out. It is we have made it a waste. We are not able to use it. We are not able to process it properly. That's why we are calling it a waste. And I am sure that after your talk, many of the people, they will think about it again. And if agriculture waste can be converted into a wealth, or how we can do that. Your research work, your uh, integration of your idea with technology and uh, so many things and uh, whatever you have spoken, I am sure that uh, not only the startups or the professionals, those who are working in this area or the industry, but a lot of students will also get motivated to work in this area because this is a common problem and this is one of such problem, which is a national problem. It is not that it is only in Punjab or it is in Uttar Pradesh, it is in Kerala also, it must be in Tamil Nadu also, it must be in Northeast also, Meghalaya also, it must be everywhere, wherever uh, we will look into this. So uh, now generally what happens that when we talk about dairy industry or we talk about agriculture, we talk about separate verticals. And this is one of the issue which is becoming a challenge that when we talk a vertical, okay, in that vertical we are doing very good, but the next vertical which is should be integrated, 
we are not talking about that. So I am sure that this webinar series will provide and is providing a platform to all those verticals to come together. We had a wonderful session on dairy industry also. We had a lot of sessions on different uh, domain areas of agriculture also. And one more thing I will request you, Dr. Singh. As a university, I always wish that whatever innovation is happening, whatever research is happening, whatever new ideas are there, they must not only be shared on platforms like this webinar. Because these webinars, however, thousands and thousands of people are watching it through different platforms. Or they will be looking into it later on, on YouTube or other channels. But I wish that these ideas need to be incorporated in our academic system also. And what I request you to look into a possibility that if we can have a small micro certificate program, a small micro certificate program, maybe a few hours initially, which create an awareness about the possibility, which speaks about your research, which say, okay, oh, wow, it is also possible. I never thought of. So if uh, such a certificate program is possible, we will love to uh, organize that. We will love to plan that. We will love to work on that so that not only Shobhitians, not only people, those who are in our fraternity or agriculture fraternity, otherwise also people can look into the possibility and be benefited. Secondly, if we can join hands in some collaborative research. Shobhit University is always very open. I always say we are one such university where there is a red carpet, not a red tape for every new idea. So I wish that uh, if there is something, some possibility to do joint research, we will like to explore that also. The farmers' welfare is a national issue nowadays. We all know that. Uh, and uh, on this platform, I cannot uh, share anything uh, which is of political color or flavor. But uh, yes, we all are concerned about the welfare of our farmers and not only of our Indian farmers, but globally, because they are the bread givers and we are the bread seekers. So they need to be acknowledged and we need to empower them. We need to ensure they live better than what we are, uh, the way we are living. And your contribution in that through your research, your idea is definitely adding value to that. Thank you very much. It was indeed a pleasure to have you and listen to you. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you very much for the very important valedictory address in this national webinar series on doubling farmers income by 2022. Honorable Chancellor, you have said it very rightly that you know lot of uh, the large audience of the grassroots level needed to understand what Dr. Harinder Singh said it today in his important webinar talk. And it is, you know, very nice that to, you know, uh, invite him to the university to, you know, uh, you know, for collaborative research project and also, you know, to offer a micro certificate program certification or micro certificate program on commercial fodder or processed processing of fodders based on today's talk. And this will facilitate a lot of rural use to get uh, to get into establishing, you know, agri tech startups at farm level and farmer level. And I have been consistently telling in all these 52 webinars, which the, the you know, Soviet Institute of Engineering Technology, uh, Engineering and Technology, Modi Pro Meerut, has convened during the last one year, that the country needs about something like one agri-tech, deep tech startup in every gram panchayat. It is essential. and. Uh, no, this is a very important uh, topic area, which can facilitate, and both the Soviet Institute of Engineering Technology and the your uh, you know company 
you know, your uh, research institute, you know, can join together to motivate, you know, establishing, you know, uh, startups in the further processing in the country at the village level. You also said it in your, uh, you know, address that this is to be available at the doorsteps in all the time throughout the year, whether there is a rain, whether there is a drought, whether it is no harvest, but animal has to be given its nutritious food. It's very important. And that's why many of the developed dairy economic countries are doing it, why not in India? So we would like to hear from you know, Dr. Harinda Singh after my summarization and also with a validity to address of the Honorable Chancellor to Dr. Harinda Singh. Uh, yes, it is uh, as the Honorable Vice Chancellor yes yesterday and uh, these are the initiatives and these are the considerations that uh, the outcomes or the the, the theme of uh, this uh, presentation will be shared among the policy makers and uh, secondly that uh, the micro certificate courses and if we educate our next generation that we have could not done during the last few years that they go, they come to our classrooms, they learn the techniques, the simple, the local applicable techniques of photo preserving, like sun drying hay. It has nothing to put up a big shed or industry or something. That uh, they, they can dry it uh, during extreme summers when temperature is 45, 47 degree. They can uh, dry it through sun in their backyard or anywhere. So that serves as a rich nutrition. And uh, uh, the, the, these uh, factors, uh, by uh, these considerations by Shobit University, and uh, are really appreciating. And uh, we should take these forward. And uh, we can collaborate. We can, uh, I mean, uh, know when the classes are regular, and uh, the university institutes are regular once this COVID was over and most of the people they have got vaccinated. So we, we, we need uh, to start this holy mission, the holy mission, good for our cause, good for our farmers, good for our nation. Uh, we need uh, separate studies, how many tons, how many thousand lakhs of tons we have saved on soybean, how many thousand tons we have saved on maize, and how many tons we have produced additionally uh, butter, fat, this uh, milk or milk powder through processed or locally applied techniques uh, to the fodders. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, there needs separate study, the economics total for the nation, for, 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 the, for the exports we never discussed. There is a huge potential, but uh, before serving uh, to our own animals, then only we can consider the exports and those, uh, I mean, uh, options. So we need uh, to serve our animals. Uh, we need uh, to, as the Honorable Vice Chancellor has suggested kindly, uh, we can start not only Shobis University, all the universities, they should promote these uh, small courses to train the local rural uh, graduates or the people who can further apply in their common folk, common homes, common dairy farms and uh, make big, I mean, the, the saving for the country. It is the holy mission that our cause, they are not getting sufficient nutrition. They are not getting uh, sufficient. I have seen during the, everyone might have seen during the June, July in Rajasthan, in Gujarat, people from Punjab or the other side they sent these invitations uh, of uh, beast or uh, and one of four kg, one of three kg per day. So what the fun we are making with these uh, animals? Three kg per day does mean but uh, unfortunately we no cannot do. But if these uh, processing industry comes into the shape or we train to the local graduates, the, the, the orders are there. 
processing and preservation techniques are not. So, so with this simple step, we can make a good serving. Dr. Harinder Singh. Okay, I, I, I think his uh, link is uh, not there. Ah, is joining. Dr. Singh. Dr. Singh. Okay, I, I think it's. Uh, so, so thank you very much, Dr. Singh, for your uh, observations and final remarks. And we thank our honorable chancellor for joining the uh, this we webinar series and also to give his valedictors. And he suggested we will take it up further for follow up action with Dr. Harinder Singh uh, for undertaking the micro certification program and collaborative research program. Thanks to all the part uh, participants for your participation. And we greet from Soviet University. And for more research inquiries, please contact Professor Moni Madhaswamy, Professor Emeritus and Chairman, Center for Agricultural Informatics and E-Governance Research Studies and Center for Agribusiness and Disaster Management Studies, and former Director General National Informatics Center, Government of India, New Delhi. Thank you very much. We'll close the webinar and leave studio. Thank you very much.